Welcome back guys to a brand new episode of Master in Programming. In today's episode I'm going to show you how to use APIs or how to do fetch commands inside of Wix. As you can see we're going to be fetching this very simple API created by Wix actually for the purposes of learning how to use APIs or third party APIs. And we're going to be using it inside of Wix by using a fetch command to actually get the information from the API and as you can see this API simply just generates a random greeting in a different message and we're going to be getting that language we're going to be getting the message and putting it directly on the screen so it's going to be a very simple translation of this from language and message and all of this will be done in Velo and Wix it's very easy please make sure you do watch until the end so that you can get all the information you need let's get started <music> Welcome back guys, now the first thing we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be creating a back end file and the reason for that is because it's actually much easier to make fetch requests or actually any back end code from the back end section and not from the page that you're on's code. And obviously before I begin just make sure that you're in dev mode to do this is just hover over dev mode here and for you if it's currently off it will say turn on dev mode. For me it's already on so I have a turn off and I get to have this banner at the bottom and at the same time I get access to add back end files. So let's get started by adding a back end file. Now the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be hovering over back end. I'm going to click plus and then I'm going to select the new web module. And if I have a look here now I can give it a name and for me all I'm just going to say is fetch file that's what I'm gonna call it you can obviously call it whatever you want now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually going to remove everything currently on this page and we're gonna write our own code so the first thing we need to do is in order to use fetch which allows us to communicate with third-party API's or even some of Wix's API's we need to import it so to do this we need to do, type in import Inside of the bracket, we're just going to say what we want to import, which is fetch. And then we're going to say from where we want to import that, which is from Wix dash fetch. And that allows us to use any of the functions inside of fetch, such as fetch. Now, the second thing that we need to do is we need to create a function that will allow us to communicate with that API. Now, the API that I'm going to be used for this tutorial is one actually created by Wix. It's designed specifically to for people like me or for you to just test with without having to get an API key or anything like that and this is basically the API that we're going to be used. It's a very simple API that allows you to get a greeting in a random language. For example right now we have in Portuguese and I don't know how to read that but that's the message that we're getting and if I refresh this it will randomly keep getting you a different one. For example this time we've got English and the message says hello world. If I refresh this we got hello world again, Portuguese again. I swear there's more than, <laughs> than these languages. There we go. We got French and we've got Bunjo or something else. Anyway, so that's the API that we're going to use. So to do this, let's go ahead T and we're going to say export. And I'm going to say function. And I'm just going to call it get random greeting, just like this. Now, what I'll do next is we're going to create a constant and we're going to say const response because this will save the response that we're going to get from the API and I'm going to say await fetch I'll open and close the bracket now inside of these brackets this is where you put your API link in this example this is the API link that we need so I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to place it inside of the fetch and we need to put it inside of quotation marks just like this Awesome. Now, why is this showing red? And I actually did this on purpose because there is two ways you can do this, or there's actually one correct way. But usually with functions in JavaScript, if you it doesn't matter where the order is of something, it's all gonna be tried and being called at the same time in order. Now, this happens whether or not a specific line completed what it's meant to do. For example, right now, if I go ahead here and say something like const e is equal to 3 to 43 and this fetch command here takes let's say 10 seconds to actually get some results and then we use it in here 
what will happen is that this line will actually try and work at the same time hold on let's just help it out yeah what happens is that right now line six will actually try and run before we could even have a response so this could be new because this fetch command can take 10 seconds but we javascript will still try and use it on line six so you end up with really crazy results so what we want to do is we want to create a way to wait until we get a response and then move on to the next lines. To do this, we need to change two things. For our function, we need to come here and we need to say async. And this allows us to then come here and say await. So we're saying, hey, you need to wait until we actually get a response. Now I'm gonna delete that line because it was just as an example. Now what, what I'm going to do now is I'll say if response, the, okay. So if the response actually came up with something and we can come here and do this. We're gonna open and, and close the zigzag bracket and we're gonna, we wanna do some action here if we actually got a response saying, hey, we're good. So what we're gonna do, we're always going to be receiving things in JSON, at least for this API. And we wanna say await response.json. And then we are going to return that JSON that we just received. So if we actually did get a response saying, hey, you've got something, what we wanna do is we wanna get that JSON and we wanna return it. Now, after that, I wanna check, well, what if we don't actually get an okay message? What if something went wrong? Well, then we need to return that. We can say something like return promise.reject. And sort of here, we're going to say fetch did not succeed. There we go. So this is actually it for that function. It works. And the bad thing about this is that you can actually go ahead and click run here. So there we go. And we got a return. It lagged there for a second. And as you can see, we're actually getting something. We're getting the language Spanish and the actual message. So now let's actually do something with this in the actual page because there's no point just printing it here. So I'm going to close this. Remember, we called this get random greetings. Now we're going to go back to our YouTube, which is, uh, sorry, our YouTube page here, which is the name of this page. And this, any, any code that you put here will reflect on the actual page. And what we want to do is now we want to type in import. And I'm going to say get random greetings from, and I'm going to type in back and dash. And what did we call our file? We said fetch file. Now, what did I do here? Well, I said I want to be able to use that function. So I said import get random greetings, import this function from because we need to say from where. And I simply said from, and if we go here, this is a folder called back end. And inside of that folder, we've got fetch file file. So I said back end fetch file. And now we can actually use that function. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, I want to use this function every time someone clicks on a button. So let's say this button over here. And let's change that to say get random greetings. There we go. Let's just put it in the center like this. And I'm going to go ahead and click on on click and click enter and now anything inside of these zigzag brackets will work once we actually click on this button now here what we can do is we can simply say something like this const fetch data is equal to await and now we can use that function get random greetings and let's just print it console.log and we can say fetched data. Now again, we also need to come here and say async. There we go. Let's now check out the website by clicking preview and click on get random greetings. And we can already see that there is something going on. So let's have a look at what's actually happening right here.
Okay, so straight away I realized that we have get random greetings, but if we actually go to our name of the f of the function, it's just get random greeting. So let's just to be safe, let's just actually just copy this, and we're gonna come over here. We're gonna replace this like that. Same thing like this. And now if I click on preview and click on get random greetings, and just wait a few seconds. We can hear that we're we can see that we're getting something printed and we can get that we have status success and then the greetings language and the message awesome so now let's actually do something else let's go ahead and add two different texts so we can get this text over here and or we can actually just keep it as one so we can put it over here like this and let's just expand it as much as we can because I want to show that we can actually use the information that we get from API calls or from fetch calls like this now this is text one and so now what I want to do is I want to get the language and the actual greeting and put it here on this text separately so this is what we're going to do first I want to show you what we can do we can come to fetch data and we can simply type in um, greeting and then the language and I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it over here and again fetch data greeting but instead of language we can say um, message I think and then at the very beginning, I actually want to print the full thing just to explain what I'm doing right here. We're going to do this and we are going to remove everything just like that. So now let's run this and see the different three results that we're getting and I'll explain why I'm doing this. So if I click on get random results, we can see that the actual structure of the JSON that we're getting has two things status which is just success and then greetings and inside of that greetings we've got language and message and so in order to get a specific thing that you want for example let's say we only want to get the language we're simply going to say fetch data which will contain everything dot greetings which will contain everything inside of this and then you can specify by saying dot language or dot message and as you can see in the first line i did dot, dot language and i got the german and then dot message and I got this so that's how you can use it now let's go back to the editor and what we can do is we can say const full message is equal to and now what I can say is let language equal to this let message equal to this and for the actual full message what we can say is we want it to simply be language and here we can simply pass in the language and then inside of here we can say message and here we can simply pass in the message and I just want to make sure we do have spacing so I'm just gonna come here and add a space I'll come here and add a space and now we can simply just say dot w hashtag and then this is text one so i'm just going to say text one dot text is equal to full message let's go ahead and run this and see if this is actually going to work or not so we're going to let it go we're going to click get random greetings and it seems like it worked so language japanese message <laughs> is this let's just make it look better f just for the sake of making it look better by actually increasing this all the way to the end same thing here 
And now let's go ahead and preview this. Get random greetings. We've got language, English, message, hello world. We did it. So this is actually the first episode of a few different episodes that I'm going through going deep into APIs and third party services. This first tutorial, you learn how to basically just do a very basic get or a fetch command that allows you to get some information from an API here and use it on the website. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how you can use post, patch, and how you can actually do queries with APIs through Wix. Thanks so much for watching. Please make sure you leave a like and a subscribe and see you in the next episode.